Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install vinyl siding on a porch. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. This channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video and smash that like button. That's all I ask in return for making this video. There's a couple nuances that's different than installing regular vinyl siding on a typical wall when it comes to installing it on a porch because you got an elevation difference and I'm gonna show you how to address it. Let's get started. So as you can see, the deck's a different elevation than where the siding started on this wall, but you wanna make sure you line the siding up with each other. So in order to do that, the best thing to do is take a speed square, just go ahead and eyeball it to the bottom of this next of this run coming across or the best one to use would be the one closest to where the top of the deck is. So just put your speed square, slide it until it lines up with the bottom of it. And it looks like about like that. Make a mark here and then transfer the mark over here. And something like that. All right, now we know the bottom of our starter strip needs to be in line with this mark right here. So that's why I went ahead and installed this J channel around the whole deck. So that way it hides the bottom of that siding. All right, I got a piece of starter strip here. And what we need to do is just lay that into that J channel that I already had installed. And we're going to line it up with that mark that I made. And it looks like somewhere around there. Okay. And then just go ahead and tack that into place. So I went ahead and got this starter strip installed and the easiest way to do it is after I secured this corner here when I showed you earlier. Now all you gotta do is put a level on it, level it as you go and just nail it as you go as well. So that way you start out with a nice level line and you don't wanna measure straight off your deck because a lot of decks have a pitch so water drains off the deck. So be sure to use a level when you're doing your first starter strip. So once you get your siding started, you should have something like this, the same elevation from this wall to this wall. And it runs clear around the side, inside the porch here, runs all the way around to this side. And the same thing goes in this corner. Just wanna make sure they line up like the same elevation. And that looks good and it runs along the wall and everything's lining up very nicely. And before you do any siding, you definitely gotta make sure your J channel around doors, around the top, and your ceilings need your F channel installed. And as you can see, I already got the ceiling started. So I'm gonna finish that up towards the end of the video. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep running the siding on the walls. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So as you can see, this first piece on this next run, I gotta cut around this E block. So in order to do that, just go ahead and take off the uh, trim on the outside of the E block. And then just hold your siding right up to where it's gonna start at right up to that E block and I just am going to rest it right on it and mark about a quarter inch on each edge of the E block. So now we know where we got to cut around and the best practice here is to go ahead and pull a measurement up off the lip of the bottom piece of siding. So it looks like we got about six and a quarter, just double check, make sure it's the same on both sides, six and a quarter. So all we gotta do is measure up six and a quarter on those marks and cut it out and I'll show you how to do that. All you gotta do is take your speed square, line it up with the marks you made around the E block, go up to six and a quarter, make a mark, and then trace a straight line off the speed square. And that looks really good. And now all we gotta do is use this as a straight edge and mark a line from mark to mark there. Whoops, dropped my pencil. Okay, so now all you gotta do is take some tin snips and then simply cut that out. And um, it's, it's warm out today, so this stuff is cutting pretty easy, which um, you'll notice when it's colder, this stuff has a tendency to wanna crack when you're cutting with these. So always say resort to some kind of uh, saw when it's cold out if you got to do siding. So take a skill saw or a circular saw, put the blade on backwards, or you can use a grinder wheel to cut. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can even use an oscillating tool to cut it out if it's cold. All right, so as you can see, we got that cut out very nicely. 
And now we'll go ahead and place that around the E-block. Okay, so go ahead and just put your siding over whatever you're cutting around. And like I said, in this case, it's an E-block and slides around like that. Looks like a nice cutout. And go ahead and snap your siding into place. And you can start around the E-block or you can uh, start on the edge of the siding, whichever one you prefer. And this looks like it's gonna be a very good cut. And uh, sometimes you get lucky like that. After you got the siding around the E-block, the next thing you gotta do is just take the trim and place it around the E-block and snap it into place like so. And it snaps on fairly easy. And that gives you a good finished look around your outlet. So now we're gonna continue running this and I'm gonna show you the best way to nail the siding. Before I show you the best way to nail the siding, first I'm gonna show you how to snap it onto the siding that is existing on the wall already. So just take your uh, piece you got cut line it up with the interlocking channel on the piece already installed and simply just push up over that piece of channel and it's going to snap right in place and you're going to hear it kind of lock into place after you got the whole piece on boom you heard that little snap there towards the end so now you just slide it where you need it and in this case we're going right into the inside corner and when you nail this stuff you need to make sure you hit a stud so this is certainty brand siding and they have the easy stud finder method that uh, has the nailing flange labeled after you have your siding snapped on into place be sure to find your stud so best thing to do that hit along the wall so you hear something solid it looks like it's on the letter s on the nailing flange and i'm going to show you this up close here in a minute but go ahead and put a nail there make sure you drive your nail in straight and leave about an eighth inch gap between the nailing flange and the siding because you need to let this stuff expand and contract like that. All right, so let me pull the camera up close and show you, but since we hit the letter S, we know every S is going to have a stud behind it. So as you can see, I got a nail on this S, on this S, and on this S, and they're spaced every 16 inches apart, the letters. So let's say your stud was here on this D, then that means every D is 16 inches apart and should hit a stud if your wall is 16 on center. Now if it's two foot on center, these letters are not going to work. So just keep that in mind if you're looking to buy certain teeth siding because of that reason. When it comes to measuring for the next piece, the best thing to do if you already have a run below it to pull off of is hook on to that run because you should already have it spaced a quarter inch away from the inside of that J channel for expansion. So just hook onto it, measure right up to the edge of the siding that you just installed, and we got exactly 10 foot. So what you need to do is add an inch because you need to allow an inch to overlap. So we need to cut it 10 foot, one inch. And then after I cut that, I'm gonna to explain to you the reason why you wanna run your siding to lap a certain way. But let me go ahead and get this installed. If you look down the wall from this direction, as you can see, you do not see any overlaps. But if you come down to this side of the wall, the overlaps are much more visible. You can see one right above the E block, right there. And you can see the one right here that we just installed. So that leads me to want to inform you that you want to start from a side that you do not want to see the overlap. So if I'm walking out of this patio door, so if I'm walking onto the back deck, that's going to be the most visible angle that I'm going to see the most. So as you can see, the overlaps here are not as visible and over from this direction, they're not that visible either. So whenever you start, start on the side that you are going to be at the least. So we're going to want to start from this side so the overlap is coming in from this angle. Just a pro tip. As you can see, we got the siding up to the top to where we're going to have to finish that top edge. And to do that, you're going to have to use what's called utility trim. And we'll have to rip down the last piece. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's the piece of utility trim I'm going to install. And all this is for is to give you a finished edge and it holds that last piece of siding securely on the wall because there's going to be no nails actually holding it. This is all that's going to be holding it along with the siding below it. And this also gives it an edge so that wind can't go behind the top piece siding and pull it off. So you definitely want to make sure you use this utility trim. Some people call it undersill, but to install it, 
Just go ahead and line it up with the J channels nailing flange. So like that. And you just want to put a nail that's going to go in between the uh, nailing slot that lines up with the J channels nailing slot. So you're going to notice it's going to line up perfectly with the J channels nailing slot. And that's what you want. And it gives you a nice even reveal if you see here by doing so. And you just put a nail every 16 inches. And nice and secure and go ahead and get that installed and then we'll get the siding going. So I need this piece of siding ripped down two inches to finish the top. So I already marked a two inch mark going down the piece of siding. So just take a pair of 10 snips and all you gotta do is cut right down that line and uh, it's pretty warm out today and this is cutting very easy because the warmer the better. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this all the way down then we're gonna snap it into place. All right, so how you snap this last piece in, you gotta make sure it's facing in towards the crease of the utility trim and snap it in at the same time. And it can be a little bit of a, give you a little bit of a fit sometimes so you gotta work with it but just be sure to follow that same process all the way down that final top piece of siding. Looks like we got a deer over here trying to join us. All right, as you can see here, all the walls are completed, but I'm not quite finished yet because I got to finish the ceiling above that is not quite done. As you can see, I still got to keep this going. I started this the other day, got about halfway done. This is going to require two people. I have my dad, his name's Gerald. He's going to come down. He's going to work one side over to me and I'm gonna work from this side over. So because it's a 12 foot long span, it's very, the soffit wants to sag very easily. So you gotta have two people lift it up in there. Now, if it was only six foot long, I could easily do that by myself, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the product we're gonna be using. As you can see here, the product I'm gonna be using is Colonial White Color. That's the T4 inch solid and it's made by Certainteed Matte Finish. Let me zoom out a little bit here. And this is what it looks like. It comes in 12 foot sheets and I'm gonna show you how to cut it. All right, in order to cut this stuff, it's pretty simple. It's really similar to vinyl siding. Our measurement here is 137 and three quarter. Go ahead, pull it, make a mark. And the next thing you need to do is take your speed square and then go off the straight edge of the soffit. Then make a straight line over the mark. And you gotta go off each edge because the speed square is simply not long enough. And then you take your handy dandy 10 snips, just cut straight down that line. And it cuts very simple, it's very easy, especially with it being warm out today, like I said. All right, now that we got it cut, let's get it installed. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this piece of soffit installed. So I have drilled down on this end and he's a little bit more towards the center than what I am, as you can see. So it's always best practice to slide it into the F-channel first. All right, and then you, both people are gonna have to kind of line it up and pull towards each other. It looks like it snapped in pretty easy, and then always slide it back and forth to double check to make sure it locked in. Looks good. Now, all we gotta do is put a nail in each one of those fur strips. And it's as simple as that to install the soffit and uh, just keep doing that same method, clear across until you get to the end of the wall here. The final piece of soffit is going to have to be ripped down to finish up the end just like you see here and that is all there is to doing your soffit ceiling on your vinyl siding porch. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's all there is to installing vinyl soffit and vinyl siding on your porch. And again, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And my name's Josh, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.